of them is not yet rated, but it's not very appropriate for children that aren't also adults. Content warning for an abortion joke, a second baby syndrome joke, a cannibal joke, a pedophile joke, and an artistic portrayal of child neglect and abuse. This album's in poor taste. The lullabies and bedtime stories are bizarre, and the improv between tracks is inappropriate and tacky. Bisexual dinosaur How much I've missed you Bisexual dinosaur How much I love you Fucking the sweet Men and women Bisexual Dinosaur, he taught me a lot Thank you Bisexual Dinosaur he taught me that love Love is an object It's a fake concept A word for something that doesn't exist There's no straight, there's no gay, it's just sexual preference. There's no bisexual, but it's just a title. Oh my lovely bisexual dinosaur. My bisexual Dinosaur You taught me a lot Throughout life With your huge Dinosaur Cock Oh my lovely bisexual dinosaur How much you've taught me throughout life With your big dinosaur cock Wompy baby! Grumpy baby! Grumpy baby! Grumpy baby! Grumpy baby! Grumpy baby! What? To go to bed. No, I don't want to go to bed. But I have a little mm, bedtime story for you tonight, mm. and it's about you. Mm. It's called "Gwumpy Baby Almost Destroys Reality Again," <laughs> but Angry Mushroom says no. By Princess Fickle. Hmm. Gwumpy Baby is only two days old and hasn't had a chance to learn fencing Cornish wrestling yet. But they have gone back and forth between two different realities. One reality, the reality Gwumpy Baby was born into, is the dreadfully familiar reality of the readers on the version of planet Earth where humans die due to hunger. Wah, wah. The other reality hides behind the skin of that universe, and it stands between that universe and all the others. Perhaps this magnificent but inconsistent ability of interdimensional travel could act as some sort of self-defense oh. for Gwumpy Baby as a flock of velociraptors surrounded them intent on eating their flesh. Gwumpy Baby clenched their fists, breathed in deep, planted their feet, shut their eyes, and opened their mouth wide, head shaking and screamed. Gwumpy Baby! Traveled across time and space 
and something else your scientists haven't discovered yet. The ground and sky shook. The velociraptors looked at each other, terrified and shocked for a moment, and then quickly scattered into the forest of trees that try too hard to make you laugh. <laughs> Grumpy baby! shouted a new voice that belonged to Angry Mushroom. The voice was very gruff. And also, Angry Mushroom is a fly agaric mushroom. You know, the one with the red and white spots that Santa Claus feeds his deers before drinking their piss, so he can gain the ability to fly around the world in one night. Angry Mushroom, where were you? asked Grumpy Baby to Angry Mushroom. Those velociraptors almost ate me! Grumpy Baby! You can't attempt to dismantle reality like that just to get out of a pickle jar, yelled Angry Mushroom, very angry, hunched over and strutting towards Grumpy Baby like a cowboy who lost their cows. <coughs> you might destroy everything if you do that and get the god of this Whoa. world upset. Who's the god of this world? Asked Grumpy Baby. Humpty Dumpty, of course, yelled Angry Mushroom, pouting their mouth and looking up at the yoke in the sky. All right, said Grumpy Baby. I think Humpty Dumpty is an egg. Don't be ridiculous, twin sibling, yelled Angry Mushroom angrily. Angry Mushroom is Grumpy Baby's twin sibling that Grumpy Baby ate in the womb. We have no reason to think that Humpty Dumpty is an egg until Lewis Carroll claimed as much. And what, should we think that a pedophile like Lewis Carroll is a prophet? Well, Joseph Smith was a pedophile and he was a prophet. Pouted Grumpy Baby, arms crossed. Joseph Smith is a false prophet, sent by the jester to lead us away from Humpty Dumpty, yelled Angry Mushroom. Well, I want to follow Humpty Dumpty, pouted Grumpy Baby. Humpty Dumpty is an idiot. There are beings bigger than that old egg. Humpty should listen to Humpty's mom, the geese mothers. Those are the only gods I listen to, and even them not really. Angry Mushroom was so angry at such unspeakable, but apparently indeed spoken blasphemy. <gasps> the geese mothers aren't real! Humpty Dumpty has no parents! Humpty Dumpty is the first cause! The uncreated creator! <clears throat> Grumpy Baby was grumpy and wanted no more talk of religion. I miss my parents! Cried Grumpy Baby. They heard a great roaring in the distance. Oh no! Yelled Angry Mushroom. It's the three-headed shadow Tyrannosaurus Rex! We must hide in that hole dug out on the ground by John Larson! Grumpy Baby and Angry Mushroom jumped into the hole. John Larson was practicing a new song on a guitar he borrowed. Oh hey, Grumpy Baby and Angry Mushroom. John Larson smiled. Suddenly! One of the shadow faces, full of shadow teeth, tore its way into the hole, snapping. And what happened next? Find out on the next episode of The Grumpy Baby Show! The only show made by and for Grumpy Baby! This episode was made by Princess Fickle, though. Long lost sister of Dream Ellie, a devotee of the Rainbow Goose. But this episode was approved by the only person whose opinion really matters. Their Majesty Grumpy Baby! realistic bedtime story you've played so far. All the others are like, oh, bedtime's so sleepy, but that baby sounds just as grumpy as I am! Grumpy baby, this, this track is gonna be at the be towards the beginning of the album, so you don't even have a feel of how the general album is going yet. Yeah, but maybe... Mm, what if every um, track sounds like this? <laughs> um, then, then, uh... Mm, uh, mm, then, then maybe we, um, 
<laughs> All right, look, this is the take two for that, okay? That track plays, and then I say... All right, Grumpy Baby, now that we got all our wiggles out. You ready to go to bed? No! Please? No! All right, all right, all right. I'm... I want to be grumpy like they were when they go, Grumpy Baby, 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 Grumpy song that goes Grumpy Baby, Grumpy That old tree sprouting baby teeth. The night men were finishing their shift the Monday before last, and on their way to haul out the shit over on the east edge of town, they caught the sunrise glinting off something in an upper branch. Just a couple here and there at first. Of course, now each morning seems another full set's bloom to gleam in the morning dew. So the other day we had the dentist take a look at him, and wouldn't you know it, every last set matches one of the indentations he's taken. Matches someone in town. My boy just lost his last one round Christmas. But lo and behold, they found him all on a mossy branch about halfway up. Now, I'd left each one of them for the mice as they fell out. So you tell me how they found their way into the spring buds of that damned old tree. And maybe it would be fine. Maybe we could ignore it and go on about our business, were it not for the fucking birds. Three days now we've walked into them swarming round the thing to fight over the new crop. Now, a bird ain't meant to swallow a handful of teeth, is it? 
So it certainly ain't meant to then start hollering with the voice of whoever's teeth it gobbled up. I've heard a magpie mock the merchant's hawking while begging for a crumb here and there, but never in his exact fucking timbre. I was woken last night. Thought my boy'd had a bad dream. Except my boy wasn't in the room, you see. You know what I'm gonna say, don't you? It was a bird at the window, mewling and begging in his fucking voice. So we're hoping to move soon as we've got the coin, same as everyone else. Hope there's work upriver, and I suggest you join us. Leave this place to the birds, and the teeth, and the tree, before it grows anything else. The Little Goose 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 The Little Be grumpy. We go to bed. No. Grumpy baby. Grumpy baby. Oh, 
Give the baby drug. Give the baby drug. Give the baby drug that make him go asleep. Give the baby drugs. Give the baby drug. Give the baby drug that make him go asleep. Give the baby drug. Give the baby drug. I won't give you drugs. Give the baby drug. Give the baby drug. Give the baby drug that make him go asleep. This is just milk. It's just, it's just milk. Put that on my tummy. Like my dinosaur friends that I met yesterday. They were cool and they, they bit my nose and it was lots of fun and we played together so nice. I like that one. But it made me want to play Princess Pickle and now I want to go play with my dinosaur friends. Yeah, there's so many dinosaurs on this album. There are? Yeah, that's why we put it on the cover. <laughs> shooka shooka. Boo boo. Oh, baby, why are you sh 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 shaking? Is it the way I sing these silly tones that makes you sh sh shake your little bones? Oh, la do do sh do do. Ooh, baby, I sure love you. 
but you're really creeping me out when you're shaking shaking all about oh shuka shuka boo boo Ooh, what am i to do when that death rattles coming from you oh shuka shuka boo 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 oh no honey can you check on the baby i think its batteries run out we believe in a woman's right to shake her own baby <laughs> That's unadvisable by your Leo team to say that, so I suggest you take it back right now. Princess Fickle! Princess Fickle! Can't support killing babies! Yeah, that's what I said, because I'm a baby, and I said, you can't do that. We're too powerful, and we'll kill you back. Yeah, we'll eat your brains, and shoot 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 them out of your nose! Groovy baby. What? I thought you were pro-choice. What? I, um, I like making choices, and you, um, yeah. Because you ate me in the womb! You ate me! <laughs> um, yeah, because you're a mushroom. I was told that's what you're supposed to do with mushroom. You shouldn't eat your own twin sister okay. in the womb. Well, maybe my twin sister should not be a mushroom next time, and then maybe she won't look so delicious. Gloppy baby!
Drinking from the vomit of the universe in the endless chunks of bile, I get lost for a while. The flavor, far from vile, shows me the purest of styles. How I should adorn my garbs and paint my face in exaggerated smiles. It told me to adore the stink as I sleep within the piles of feces. The stench is promised and pure. Unlike the world beyond this one, it's hard to endure. Honestly, I'd rather stay here and bathe in the manure. But I'm lured away from these lands. Who else could love a world full of waste? Who else would swim in the oceans of piss and give the vomit a taste? Who else would sit with me and coat their face in the beautiful brown paste and leave our beings behind without a trace? The chunks told me no one would. I'm a pig on my own. In this paradise where I've began to build my home, free to explore the seas, many unseen miles left to roam. At least I don't have to worry about my odor since here I am alone. Wow, wasn't that beautiful, Grumpy Baby? Yeah, it was so good because they poop everywhere and there was poop all over the place and they were such a happy baby. And now they're gonna go to sleep and all the poop and they're gonna have sweet food. Yeah, what a. Yeah. And now, the world's saddest clowns. Happiest Halloween by Mr. Zero, Tragic Comedian. On October 30th, many, many years ago, a very curious little girl was standing on the border of the woods near her village. She could smell something very interesting. Caramel apples, cotton candy, popcorn... <laughs> She could smell it emanating from the woods, so she decided to go investigate. She walked through the woods, through, through all the whistling birds, the squirrels, and all the deer and, and flora and fauna of the woods. And then she came to a darker part of the woods. The trees were more barren. There were fewer and fewer animals. Mostly just crows, kind. And then she saw in a little hollow a little tiny circus tent. Red and yellow colored. She went inside the circus tent and saw just a single circle ring for the circus. And in that ring sat a little, sad, frowning clown. She walked up to the clown and said, Hey, Mr. Clown, why are you so sad? And the clown looked up at her and said in his clown voice, Well, tomorrow is Halloween, my favorite holiday of all time. And, well, I have no one to celebrate it with. No one ever comes to visit me or watch me perform. And that just makes me so sad. The little girl said, looked at him and said, You know what, Mr. Clown? I'm going to make tomorrow the best Halloween for you. I'm going to get all of my friends after we go trick-or-treating. And we'll come and you can perform for us. Oh, really? said the clown. That would be so wonderful. It would really fill my heart with joy. You wouldn't be lying to me. You wouldn't be telling me stories, would you? The little girl said, I promise. Tomorrow night will be the best Halloween of your life. And then the little girl went home. She said her prayers. She combed her hair. She brushed her teeth. And she went to bed. The next morning, she went to school and told all the children about the sad little clown in the little hollow in the middle of the woods and how they were going to give this clown the best Halloween ever. 
And all the kids agreed to go. They thought it would be fun. Great, a great time to go out and meet a new friend and watch a circus show. So that night, after they all had finished trick-or-treating, and their parents were thinking they were nestled snugly in their beds, they went to the middle of the woods, where they could see all the little night creatures, all the little squirrels, the raccoons, the possums, all watching them, watching them with a weird curiosity, as this parade of masked children walked into the woods and then they came to where the woods were barren with nothing but crows and the sound of wolves howling at the moon <coughs> and there they saw it the little tiny circus tent red and yellow and inside the circus tent they had seen that the stands had been erected the seats and the kids sat on the stand, staring into the center ring. And they saw a light go on, and there stood the clown. And he no longer looked as sad as he always did. He had a happy face. And he started juggling for the kids. And the kids oohed and awed. And then he started juggling fire. And the kids went, and clapped and then he juggled knives and they clapped some more and then he took a knife and he swallowed it and they were amazed and then he climbed up on the high wire and he took a bicycle across the high wire and the kids clapped and then he pulled a pratfall and the kids laughed he told jokes he told stories he sang he played music and the the children could all agree that this was the best show that they had ever seen. They clapped so loudly that their hands started to bleed. And when that clown got into the center ring and he smelled the blood coming from the kid's hands, he just smiled and he said, The little girl last night who brought you all here, she promised that this would be the best Halloween ever. The best Halloween of my life. And you children all came to see me. And you came and you laughed at my jokes and you applauded my, my stunts. You loved my songs and you loved everything I did. And I thank you so much. But now, now is where I become really the happiest clown ever. You see, children, I'm not a normal clown. I'm a clown of a different kind. And if there's one thing I love more than the sound of children's laughter, the sound of the children's applause, it's the smell of the blood on your hands. Oh, this truly will be the best Halloween ever. And suddenly the clown's little frowny face turned into a big, evil, smiling face. And he rampaged and ate every last one of those children. And it truly was the best Halloween of his life. The end. Princess Fickle, when you put me a bed, you said that there were going to be lots of dinosaurs in this album. And I have only heard one dinosaur, or maybe two. But anyway, there's not enough dinosaurs in this. Because I hung out with my dinosaur friend yesterday. So I know what dinosaurs are like. And this isn't what dinosaurs are like at all. So I don't even know why I agreed to be a part of this. Goofy baby, don't worry about it. Every track on this album is about dinosaurs. <laughs> These people have real ideas about what dinosaurs are about. It's like they never even met one. Yeah, most of the people that we contacted did, did, were on a planet where dinosaurs are currently extinct. <laughs> yeah, they're dead. They're dead, Goldie Baby. <laughs> Just like your parents. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, sure. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You made me a grumpy baby, please, that fickle. You turned me into a grumpy baby. Oh,
I love you. I love you too. I love you. 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 I love you so much. I love you. I love you. So much. I love you so much. <laughs> I love you so much. <laughs> I love you. I love you. I love you too. I love you so much. I love you. I love you when you're a good baby. At 3 p.m. Yeah. And we're just a couple of good babies in bed. And we see that we love each other so much because it's 3 p.m.